Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim and I am making a bunch of videos about Luminar Neo to show you how to get the most out of it. This is really designed for those that are new to Luminar Neo and um, just to help you get up to speed and get running with this product. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. There's a uh, little button down below you can press. Uh, but this video is the fourth one in a row about the four different sections for editing. So if you look at a photo like this one, there's essentials and then creative and then portrait. And this video today is about professional. And you might be thinking, Jim, there's only two tools. Like what can you really talk about? These two tools are two of the best, most powerful and most useful tools in Luminar, in my opinion. And I've been using Luminar since like before the first one came out, uh, like four years ago, four, five, whatever, a number of years ago. Uh, these two tools I love, I adore, and they give you massive amounts of power over uh, and control over the light in your photo and the color. And the three things that I really think about when I edit a photo are light and then color and then detail. So this covers two of them really well. Now I have not edited this photo. If you look at edits, you can see I did go into a race. I removed a dust spot and in develop, all I did is correct the um, distortion. So my photo, uh, if I could get this thing, looked like that. You can see a vignetting and a spot that is taken out, but I haven't done anything else to it. I'm gonna dive into these two tools. First one, of course, is super contrast. And as the name implies, it's super at adjusting contrast. So as you can see here, three different pieces or sections of the photo get adjusted here. The highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And then each of these sections has a balance slider, which basically helps you kind of amp up whatever you're doing. So what I normally do is come in and I'll just kind of drag the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, just like, you know, a third or maybe half away. And then I'll come in and adjust the balance. And so Contrast, of course, is the difference between light and dark or the brighter parts and the darker parts of the photo. So in the highlight section, the best way to figure out what's being impacted, in fact, let me just reset um, the midtone and the shadow, is uh, with highlights, I just drag it and you can kind of see what's happening. So for me, if I go very high in contrast in the highlights, it doesn't look that good because that blue is getting darker and, and uh, it's basically, um, you know, it's kind of blending in with the cloud. So I might would move it about halfway and then come in and check the balance. And if you drag the balance to the right, you see it's kind of doing more of that. If I drag the balance to the left, I really like what it's doing there because it's creating more separation or contrast between these lighter parts and those darker parts, which I think gives the photo um, a better look and it gives the clouds a little bit more texture over there. So there it is before highlights and then after. So I've got that set. Midtones, again, I'll come in and I'll usually move each of the, the buttons or the sliders, um, all three of them for highlights, midtones, and shadows. I'll usually move them a part of the way and then come back and do balance. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm going to do them in a row. So midtones contrast, you know, go kind of halfway. And then I just take the balance slider and I drag it both directions. And in this case, I kind of like it a little bit to the left. Um, you can see a lot of this sky is being impacted. And that's why I come and I drag these sliders back and forth. And that might be kind of annoying, but I do that to give me an idea of what parts of the photo are being impacted by this adjustment. And so as you can see here, it's heavily impacting the sky. Now, I don't want to go too far because with the highlights contrast that I did a moment ago, I created nice separation. So I don't want to go too far and, and basically undo some of that. But I don't want to go this way because I don't want the sky to be really dark. This was a sunset in Colorado. It was a beautiful, warm sky. I'm going to go a little bit left there to get, uh, you know, I still have some nice contrast, but I've also brightened that sky a little bit. So if you look at the before and the after, I think this is looking pretty good so far. And then that brings me to shadows. And again, I just kind of drag it about halfway. And if I go to the right, you can see it's creating a little bit more of a silhouette kind of look. And if I go left, it's really lightening up that foreground. So in this case, I'm going to go a little bit left. And then overall, if you take a look at it, there it is before and there it is after. Keep in mind, I did nothing else to this photo, but I don't recommend that. I'm doing this for demo purposes in this video, but in real life or in real editing, I recommend starting with like, let's say the develop tool, maybe Accent AI, and then come down to super contrast. It's a great tool. It gives you a lot of power and control, but it's not something that I use just by itself. I use it generally in tandem with other tools, as I just mentioned. So lots of power and lots of control over the light, but it's really helped me balance the light out in this photo. 
without really a lot of work. If I wasn't sitting here yapping about all this stuff, that would have been, um, you know, 15 seconds or something to go from that to that, which I think is a nicely balanced uh, distribution of light. Now that I got the light handy and set, I'm going to go into Color Harmony, and this tool is uh, just fantastic. I use it all the time. It really just gives you amazing control over color, of course. Four different sections, as you can see here. Brilliance, as the name implies, is, I think of it as kind of like a combination of saturation and vibrance. It just makes it more brilliant. All the colors get a bit more vibrant or saturated and intense. So be careful there, but, you know, great for um, bumping up colors. And then the warmth, of course, is, as the name implies, it's kind of like temperature. So if I'm going left, it's cooler. If I'm going right, it's warmer. Color contrast can come in really handy because it basically, as the name implies, it creates contrast between certain colors. So what you do is you can drag it to the right to increase contrast. And what it's doing is increasing contrast between the color hue that you have selected. Uh, if you're familiar with their slider, the very far left is red. It's creating contrast between that color and the color that's opposite that on the um, color wheel. So to make it kind of easier to see, I'm gonna go into the blues, and so I'm getting higher contrast between the blues, and the uh, opposite of blue is kind of the yellow, right? So what's happening is the blue is getting really bright, and the yellowy orange is getting really dark. So it doesn't really help on this image, but there are lots of images where it does help to do color contrast. Split color warmth, um, if you take the warmth to the right, the warm colors get warmer, but if you take it to the left, they don't get cooler, they kind of get neutralized. It's, it's almost like a desaturation kind of, but not exactly. It's, I think neutralized is what they call it. Um, I generally would only be dragging this to the right in this photo. It's really bringing up some of those nice warm uh, tones in those clouds, and by the way, those clouds are just cool, right? Um, I was so happy to see that. So that's how the warmth section works. Uh, cool is the opposite. If you go left, it creates more of that cooler temperature, whereas if you go to the right, it kind of neutralizes. And if I go all the way to the right, you can see it's kind of doing this weird thing in those um, cool areas. So for me, the cool sliders would kind of go to the left, get a little bit more of that blue going, and the warm slider would go a little bit to the right. And you can see I'm getting some nice color contrast um, between the warm and the cool colors. So in a scene like this where you have some of both, works really well to kind of play them against each other. And keep in mind that the opposite of blue on the color uh, spectrum or color wheel is yellow. So when you've got the blue and yellow like this, you can kind of amp up both their complementary colors. And even though they're both getting kind of intense, I don't think it looks like it's over the top intense. So you've just got those two dominant colors here. They're complementary. They're both fairly saturated, but you know, I think it looks good. You could also pair that slider with things over here. So like maybe you take the brilliance down a little bit so it's not too intense. You could obviously go to the right if you really want an over the top kind of look, but you don't have to. So you can pair these things and come in and really control color by using them all kind of together. And that leaves us with color balance. I love color balance. I've talked about it in countless videos over the years when I've talked about Luminar, and um, it's just it's just great. It is fantastic, and it does um, basically color adjustments in three different sections. So if you click in this drop down, you have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And what it does is, I talked about the color wheel a moment ago. The color wheel basically you know shows you what opposite colors are. Well, this is what's opposite on the color wheel. So cyan, its opposite is red. Magenta's opposite is green, and yellow's opposite is uh, blue. So in the shadows, I can take any of the um, cyan, I can go towards cyan or red. So I could go cyan or I could go red. You know, you just got to be a little bit careful because you can get kind of over the top stuff. So when I use this, I tend to go kind of sparingly. But it separates these different tonal areas, shadows, midtones, and highlights. For me, I use highlights a lot on sunsets like this, where I would come in and say, all right, maybe, I don't know if I want any red, maybe a tiny bit, maybe I want to do a little bit of magenta to get some of that kind of, I just like that magenta kind of look in sunsets, it's kind of a thing. Um, and then maybe I want a little bit of yellow, um, you know, maybe I want a little bit more magenta, maybe I want a little bit more red. It's just, it's gentle stuff that I feel like gets me there, but if I show you the before and after, there it is before, and remember, I've reset all these other sections to zero. So this is just highlights on color balance, but that's what it was before. And there it is now, a vibrant, beautiful sunset with just a couple of minor things. And all I'm doing is shifting colors 
in the highlights. So depending on your image and what you want to do, you might want to come in and do something different. Um, I'll often go into the shadows and go a little bit cooler in the shadows uh, to kind of play off the warmer stuff in the highlights. May or may not work in this photo. You know, it works okay there. Um, I feel like I'm losing some of what I did in the highlights, so maybe I go back to highlights and maybe I do a little bit more. Again, um, it's color balance for a reason. You're looking for a balance in the colors, which for me, the only way to really figure it out is just to experiment and play around. But that is Color Harmony, and before that was Super Contrast, the two tools that are currently in the Pro section. Now, if you're a user of previous versions of Luminar, you know that Dodge and Burn and also Clone and Stamp were in the Pro Tools. They're supposed to be coming in the future, but considering the situation in Ukraine, as you're all aware, and Skyloom being based there, we're just going to um, be patient and wait uh, because they're focusing on things that are obviously much more important right now. So for the moment, we have these two tools in Professional, and they're super powerful and amazing, and they work really well in combination, as I said, with other tools. So I will often use Super Contrast and Color Harmony on an image, but I rarely use them alone. I'll often start in Essentials. In fact, just basically every photo, I start in Essentials, do some things, and then may um, actually skip over Creative and come down and do stuff here in Professional, and then go back to Creative. It just depends on the image. Image, but these two tools in professional are super powerful and super amazing but don't let the term professional scare you off they you know they maybe they're intimidating at first just move the sliders around you're not going to break anything they're really easy to get accustomed to using but uh, as I showed you here each tool um, it does a lot for you and the only way to really figure out how well it's going to help your image is just to move some sliders around and see what it does to your image. Like I said, you won't break anything. It's all fun and games anyway. Hope this helps. Hope this has given you some idea of how these two tools in professional work. And I'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope this is helpful. I appreciate you guys following along and subscribing. Thumbs up if you like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, my friends, you guys take care of yourselves, and adios.